Pedaling through the streets of New York City can be physically and mentally thrilling. And for many, it's the most exhilarating part of their day. When I commute my bike, I ride from the Clinton Hill neighborhood up to the Columbia Medical Center. Two small kids at home, I don't have a lot of other chances for exercise, so it's, it's definitely a, a workout. And for Dr. Darby Jack, cycling through urban canyons is more than a routine. It's a potentially trailblazing field of study. To characterize the, the health consequences of riding a bike in New York City. We all know the risks of navigating traffic on a bike. Instead, Dr. Jack and Dr. Stephen Trillwood of Columbia University are more interested in the dangers we can't just avoid and we can't see. Most people who ride their bike in New York have had the experience of being stuck behind an idling FedEx truck or whatever it happens to be and getting a, a, an obvious large dose of, of pollution from that. So as you move through a city, you have air pollution that comes from far away, from the Midwest where a lot of electricity is generated. And then you have your local sources from space heating to traffic. There is a lot of uh, soot or black carbon and, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, metals. Lots of nasty stuff you definitely don't want in your body. For the longest time, most studies relied upon these air monitors that have been on rooftops um, far from sources and have really been done primarily on ambient levels, totally ignoring the fact that people are breathing at very different rates throughout their day. So, so that's, our, that's kind of our overall arching hypothesis, is that you know, if you're an active person and exercise, you should be looking at dose and not looking at just the concentration. The problem was that monitoring someone's exposure level and physical activity at the same time just wasn't technologically feasible. So it's just been within the last few years where you've had devices that are small enough that are comfortable to wear around everywhere you go. Now armed with miniaturized monitors, Dr. Chilrud and Dr. Jack are partnering with their local public radio station, WNYC, to recruit dozens of riders to act as mobile guinea pigs. We ask study participants to, to wear our, our kit five times in a two week period. During that time, the kit will gauge their blood pressure, heart rate and breathing rate, breathing volume, as well as minute by minute exposure to particles in the air. Air comes in through this size selective inlet, it comes down and it puts the particles onto a filter, and it looks at how much light gets through that filter. Finally, the test subjects launch a GPS app, which will capture geographic data across each borough. And just to be sure these newfangled monitors are measuring accurately, each participant and their equipment are brought into a lab and put through their paces. Dr. Chilrod kindly demonstrates for us. We're measuring ventilation, we're measuring how much volume he moves in and out of his lungs and at what rate, and then we're going to compare that to the values that are being obtained with the vest so we can make sure that what the vest is measuring out in the field is actually accurate. The more vigorously that you exercise, the deeper you're going to breathe, the harder you're going to breathe, and then there's going to be greater exposure to whatever pollutants are in the air, theoretically. So you can hear how deep, how hard he's breathing. Steve is breathing right now at about 120 liters per minute. So he's taking in a lot of air right now. We hypothesize that these, that these short duration uh, exposures that occur during commuting will have an effect on your uh, heart rate variability. And then number two, that we hypothesize that it will cause an ephemeral increase in blood pressure. They also hope to identify spots throughout the city that you might want to avoid. When you're in those street canyons, the air just sits there. The air doesn't move around. And so all the particles that get emitted from tailpipes, you know, they stay. They stay around. Conversely, the breezy banks of the Hudson or the East River should have less pollution, despite their proximity to major roadways. So we're going we're gonna to pool all the data and, and create maps that will show the variation over, over space and, and over time. Although the data may eventually show dramatic increases in how much pollution you breathe in while exercising, Dr. Chilbert cautions that their goal isn't to dissuade bike riding. The exercise is good. You know, that's been shown over and over and over again that, that exercise leads to a healthier life. But the question is, is, can you do that exercise either at a certain time of the day or can you do it in certain parts of the city? You know, can you choose your route to avoid and, and limit your exposure that way? There may even be policies that cities can implement to reduce exposure. It's a five-year grant, uh, and we're, we're about halfway through year one, uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a long-term project. And you can actually take part. Yeah, go to wnyc.org streets. To find out more and learn about future biking projects.
For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.